Hello there. This video was made to show you the operation of some of my circuit boards for model railroading. I built this small layout which includes a main line with one siding to mostly demonstrate my block detector boards. These boards have special outputs which can operate the block signals of my layout. I have also included another circuit board that senses the turnout position. So this also controls how the block signals operate. Other circuit boards operating on this layout is a flasher circuit which control the flashing LEDs of the railway crossing. Along with two solid state relay boards which receive inputs from the block detectors for the two blocks the road crosses on the layout and turns on the flasher circuit. The last circuit board is a capacitor discharge board for supplying power to the turnout solenoids. The block signals used on this layout were home built by me and in the last part of this video I will show you how I you built them. The track on this layout was divided into six blocks. The two blocks on each end of the main line, blocks one and five, are just two small sections of track for the bumpers and do not have block detectors on them. The other four blocks, two, three, four, and six, have their power fed through my block detector boards. These block detectors have two extra outputs other than the ones feeding the block signals. I use one of these outputs to feed LEDs on my block diagram shown in the upper part of the skyline. Watch these two short videos showing how these LEDs work. The first video shows a train driving down the main line from west to east. You can see the LEDs lighting up to show what block the train is in. Notice the delay in the LED turning off as the train leaves the block. This is a delay built into the block detector so that dirty tracks will not cause the LEDs to flicker. The next video shows the train passing through the siding from east to west. Notice the lights of the railway crossing that start flashing as the train enters the siding. The same happened in the previous scene as the train entered mainline block 3. Next is a video showing the train traveling east down the mainline. You can see the upper part as the dual block signal turn from green to red. This is the block signal for block 3 and will turn red when the train enters block 3 indicating the block is occupied. After a short delay the block signal for block 2 turns green indicating block 2 is no longer occupied. As the train leaves block 3 and enters block 4 the block signal for block 4 turns red indicating it is occupied and after a short delay, the block signal for block 3 returns to green. Here I am going west, back down the main line. Notice how signal lights on the dual block signal changes as I flick the turnout to the main line. The next video shows the train traveling east through the siding. As the train enters the siding, which is block 6, the lower block signal goes from green to red, indicating block 6 is occupied. After a short delay, the block signal from block 2 from the siding turns green, indicating block 2 is no longer occupied. As the train enters block 4, its block signal turns red indicating it is occupied. The lower block signal for siding block 6 turns back to green. We will now travel back through the siding. First switching the turnout to the siding to get the green light.
now drive east through the main line, this time with a locomotive parked in the siding. The lower block single for the siding of the dual block single will always remain red, indicating the block is occupied. Notice how both singles show red with the turnout switch to the siding. The upper mainline single turns green when the turnout switches to the mainline, indicating it is clear to proceed. With a locomotive parked on the main line, the upper main line single will always remain red. The two siding singles will change as the locomotive progresses down the line. It is now the upper mainline single of the dual block single that stays red, and the lower siding single changes to green when the turnout switches to the siding. The singles on the west end of the line work the same as the singles you are watching on the east end. Now that you have seen my circuit boards in action, it is time to show you how everything is wired together, which I will do using block diagrams. I had decided to do this with several block diagrams showing everything in stages rather than overwhelming you with one big block diagram showing all the wiring at once. Now I will start by showing how the inputs of the four block detectors are wired up. I will only show one block detector being wired up, but the other three would be wired the same way. On this block diagram, you can see one block detector board with a section of track representing the block related to this block detector. On your right is a 5 volt power supply whose plus minus outputs are wired to the power inputs of the block detector. At the location you would find these inputs on the actual board. The block on the left represents a standard power pack or a DCC command control booster. As you see on the block diagram, one output goes to the common side of the track. The other output goes to either of the track power inputs of the block detector. The other track power input of the block detector goes to the other side of the section of track. The next block diagram shows how to hook up the outputs of one block detector to the LEDs of the two block singles on each end of an isolated section of track that's associated with the block detector. I use the plus 5 output which is directly connected to the plus 5 input of the board to feed the plus side of all four LEDs of the two block singles. Then I connected one set of outputs of the block detector, B1G and B1R, to the minus leads of one block single, either one. B1G goes to the green LED and B1R goes to the red LED. Then connect the other two outputs, B2G and B2R, to the minus leads of the other block single. That is all there is to it. The next block diagram is more complicated. It includes a block turnout sensor board, which only would be used if you wanted to use a turnout to also control how the block singles behaved around the particular turnout. The upper part of the block 
diagram shows a track section with a turnout and blocks from the west side of my demo layout. The left side of the block diagram shows a turnout switch, which is part of the turnout, in this case a Peco PL13 accessory switch. The mainline contact is connected to ground, and the siding contact is connected to plus 5 volts. The wiper is connected to one input line of each of the four sections of the block turnout sensor board. Now comes the most important thing to realize about these block turnout sensor boards. If you look closely to the inputs of this board, two of the inputs are special inputs, IN2B and IN3A. These two inputs must be connected to the wiper of the turnout switch. Since one contact of the turnout switch is connected to plus 5 volts, in this case the siding contact, the outputs of sections 2 and 3 of the block turnout sensor board must be connected to the leads of the siding block singles. If the plus 5 volts was connected to the mainline contact of the turnout switch, then the outputs of sections 2 and 3 would need to be connected to the mainline block singles. Also since the plus 5 volts is connected to the siding contact of the turnout switch, then output 1 on the right side of the siding block detector board for block 6 must be connected to one of these two sections with the special inputs, 2 or 3 of the block turnout sensor board. Block detector for block 2, which is on the point side of the turnout on the layout, must be connected to the input of two sections of the block turnout sensor boards, including the other section with the special input. Output 1 of block detector block 3 is connected to the input of the remaining section of the block turnout sensor board. The outputs of the block turnout sensor board are connected to the minus leads of the block single LEDs, as shown in the block diagram. The plus leads of the block single LEDs are connected to the plus 5 volts. These block detector boards have two extra outputs on the left side. This block diagram shows how I use the other output, output 2, to light an LED on my block diagram of the layout shown on the skyline. I needed to install a 330 ohm series resistor between the output and LED. Now we will move to the circuits which operate the LEDs of the railway crossing. When the train enters the block with the railway crossing, I use one of the green LED outputs of the block detector for that block, in this case B2G, to switch on one of my solid state relay boards. I feed plus 5 volts to the supply input of this board. And when this board is switched on, it feeds this plus 5 volts through its outline to the plus 5 volt power input of the flasher circuit, turning it on. The output of the flasher circuit feeds the LEDs of the railway crossing, causing them to flash back and forth. The solid state relay board is needed because the green LED output of the block detector does not have enough current capability to power the flasher circuit. Either of the green LED outputs, B1G or B2G, can be used e even if they are already feeding LEDs of the block singles. The last circuit I will explain is my capacitor discharge board. If any of you have ever burned out the solenoid of a turnout because you held that switch down too long, we'll see the advantage of a capacitor discharge circuit. This board will send a strong pulse to the solenoid of the turnout, and then wait till you let go of the switch. It will then recharge itself. It only takes a second to recharge, and depending on how often you are switching turnouts, can handle feeding several turnouts on your ladle. It just requires around 16.5 volts AC at the input, which is exactly the voltage of most AC accessory outputs of power packs. The block diagram shows the output of the capacitor discharge feeding a standard atlas switch. Most atlas switches have feed-throughs, so you can feed the power to other atlas switches. 
Now I will show you how I built my homemade lock signals. Here are the LEDs I would use to make these block signals. The 3mm LEDs on the right would work great for HO scale block signals, while the 1.8mm LEDs on the left I use for my N scale block signals. Notice the shorter leads on the LEDs. This is the negative side of the LEDs. The wire I used was wire wrap wire. I found this to be excellent wire for this job. To make my N scale block singles, I first use super glue to mount red green 1.8 millimeter LEDs to a faceplate made of sheet styrene plastic, with two holes drilled out to accommodate the lenses of the LEDs. I next trimmed off the negative leads of the LEDs, leaving just enough to solder the black wires onto. I then soldered on the black wires to the trimmed leads. I used brass tubing for the poles of the block singles. As seen in the picture, I soldered the positive leads of the LEDs to the brass tube. I also soldered a white wire to the bottom of the brass tube. This will carry the plus 5 volts to the common plus leads of the LEDs. In this picture, I have cut off the excess leads of the LEDs. I next fed the black leads down through the brass tube. To make the covers for the lenses of the LEDs, I used some plastic tubing I bought at the hobby shop. To cut the tubing, I used a fine bladed saw with a miter box. I cut one end of the tubing at a 45 degree angle to give the right look for the lens covers. Since the hole down the center of the tube was too small, I used a drill to enlarge it. Here is a picture of the finished lens covers. I painted the insides of the lens covers black first before mounting them to the faceplate. Here I have glued the lens covers to the faceplate using plastic cement. To make the bases of the block singles, I used balsa wood and cut them with the miter saw. Here I have cut off some bases and drilled holes through them in order to feed the brass tubing of the block singles through. Next I painted the bases black. Then I pushed the brass tube through the hole in the base and glued it at the proper height. All that is left to do is paint the rest of the faceplate, lens covers, and backs of the LEDs black. I also painted the brass tube silver. This single block single shows what the final product looks like. There's probably things you can do to make it look more professional, but these steps should get you started. Well this is it. I hope this video gives you a good idea how some of my circuit boards work for block detection and block singling and also how to use these block detectors for other jobs. I have included my contact information here in the end credits in case you have any questions or if you wish to purchase any of these circuit boards from me.